Hello and welcome back to Rue's Life from the Polytunnel on this absolutely glorious autumn day. It's 20.6 degrees here in the Polytunnel but it's only 13.4 degrees outside. So it's a lovely temperature, it's a lovely day and I'm really excited today to be introducing you to a new YouTuber. She is a fellow outdoorsy person who likes to get out and do wild things and she's recently started a YouTube channel. She also grows and gardens and has a polytunnel. So today we're going to talk about preparing the polytunnel for winter. So let's hop over to Holly's channel and I will leave a link in the description below. It's Holly May's Good Life. As I say, I'll leave a description. Do go over and have a look at her channel. It's absolutely lovely. So without further ado, let's see what Holly does to prepare her polytunnel for the winter. So Rue has asked me to do a little video showing how I put things to bed or what I do to my beds for the winter. Um, none of my beds ever get put to bed. Um, I never really consider it like that because I always think that the growing season is all year round, especially in the polytunnel. Now, I was going to do an outdoor bit, but because the polytunnel needs feeding a bit more, I'm going to show you what I do to sort my polytunnel beds out. Okay, so now I've cleared the bed out from things that I do not need. Um, all I'm going to do is do a quick weed and then we're going to do something with all this extra foliage. Okay, so that's the weeding done. It didn't take long. Um, now, these strawberries have had two crops in this polytunnel. and it's ridiculous. First crop came in April and now we're still getting strawberries. Um, you'll see in one of my other videos. I mean, look at this. I mean, slugs are eating it, but we're still getting strawberries. Look, there's a white one. But because I, I quickly learned that actually sometimes you just need to kind of get rid and be the most efficient way possible because I'm a lazy gardener. Um, so even though they've got a few on, I'm just going to chop these all the way back. I want to see how many plants we've got here and maybe thin them out. Okay, so I am mega, mega vicious with my strawberries. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be or not, but I have had too many strawberry plants in the past and they have just gone crazy and so, so much so crazy that you don't get to actually enjoy the strawberries because you can't see what there is. So these have already been hacked back once this year and they came back and they started fruiting again. Didn't they, Fleety? Um, so yeah, I'm going to see what there is here. Because I've hacked them back already, I may not need to thin them. Uh, but if you need some extra plants or anything like that, you can always come to these type of big established plants uh, to come and get your new strawberry plants. Remember strawberries, they only really are productive for about four years and then you have to kind of replace them. Oh my gosh, look at these white strawberries. I might leave that one plant because it's got so many on it. So now this is the bed with the strawberries hacked back. It looks a bit of a mess there, but to be honest, you actually get to see more. Like I said, I'm a lazy gardener, so I've just come up with a really sparky idea. I'm just going to chuck <laughs> these leaves here, which I uh, have just chopped off from from the strawberries, right? And all I'm gonna do is just layer on top the mushroom compost. There we go. And it goes. Ugh. There we go. Yeah. 
so this stuff here is I think it gets used once for mushrooms and then discarded um, and then they sell it on to gardeners like me and I'm just gonna spread it over to here like that there we go it's already got worms in it I can see there we go spread it out oh nice so yeah the I've spread it on the leaves and they should rot down as you can see it's on top of the leaves it's all next to there I've shoved some over the tomato area there and that's how I do my beds that's all I do weed and mulch yeah, so if you want to see me more, then my YouTube account is Holly May's Good Life, and I release a video every Sunday. Thank you, bye. So, some great tips there from Holly, and like me, she believes that especially with having a polytunnel, we never really stop growing and completely put the polytunnel to bed for the winter. and with holly's mulching idea and i really like that and that's the sort of thing i would always do in my outdoor beds but i hadn't thought of doing here in the polytunnel i will be going and collecting um off the farm i take the wheelbarrow and a shovel and collect up the mole hills because that's really lovely nutrient rich crumbly topsoil in effect that the moles have very kindly pushed to the surface so i can go and collect it i will also be adding in some store-bought compost to top my beds up because of course as Holly mentioned you know we've got to keep putting those nutrients back in so what do I need to do you can see I've got hanging baskets that are dying off um, and there's plants everywhere there's a few carrots and parsnips still to harvest I've still got a bucket of potatoes but pretty much everything apart from the amazing chard um, I've got a few beetroot as well still going. The straw flowers are still looking really pretty and I've been taking those indoors and enjoying them. But the pumpkin and squash, they just need to be completely pulled down. Um, as do, there's a few beans left here and the tomatoes. So there are still quite a few ripe tomatoes on these vines and I'm sure there's some green ones on there as well. So I've got something to weed and chop into but i'm also going to harvest the tomatoes that are either ripe or the green ones and pop them in the truck so i've got the truck ready i've got some secateurs and i've also got a tub and what i'm going to do and concentrate on today is getting the tomato plants out really so chopping all that foliage back harvesting the rest of the tomatoes and clearing this bed so let's get on with that. So, so far I've just got quite a lot of green tomatoes. The really big foliage I'm just going to throw in a pile and anything smaller I will pop into the bucket. As you saw in the shot just that bed is now clear there are still some beans I've lifted the roots there's no beans left on them and there's no foliage now either but I'm going to save that for another day but look at this bounty so there are a few ripe ones um, but mostly they are green but there's a really good lot in there and I've completely forgotten what varieties I've grown so I've been pulling out the labels um, so I grew this season uh, yellow pear, Brad's Atomic, Tigrella, that's another yellow pear, um, and Black Russian. So I've been harvesting and harvesting and it's been a really good tomato year here for me in the polytunnel 
and I've already got lots of passata that I've made by cooking it down in the slow cooker a um, little bit of sugar a little bit of salt and pepper um, cooking them down tiny little bit of oil and then they're bagged up and they're frozen ready or well, we've already used some but there's lots more to use so these I'll pick out the ripe ones the green ones top tip if you pop them in a cardboard box in a relatively well ventilated area that's not too light and not too dark and pop either a banana or an apple in the box with them and they'll soon ripen up so thank you so much for joining me today please do let me know in the comments below where are you up to with your gardens and plots and polytunnels and bits of land where you enjoy growing please 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 do hop over to holly's channel and uh, it'd be really lovely to give her a little boost of subscribers go and check her out she's absolutely lovely very knowledgeable and a total natural in front of the camera and before i go i would just like to say a massive massive thank you to those of you that have bought me a coffee recently and to one very very generous person who wants to remain anonymous but thank you you know who you are um, for such a generous uh, donation it's really made a difference so thank you if you do want to support Rue's life by buying me a coffee you can find the link to not only buy me a coffee but my facebook page and instagram and they're all in the description below and they're also in the bio of my channel